Hi, Kayla here from My Vegan Dreams, and I'm with Megan today. Hi, Hi Megan. <laughs> And we are bringing you a very, very special guest. Um, this is someone that when I first started my vegan journey, I found one of his videos on YouTube and he taught me about how come you don't need to take a fish oil supplement. And something I've heard my whole life is you have to take a fish oil supplement and there is actually a solution to get your omegas and DHA and all of that good stuff without harming fish. And so he's gonna be talking about that. But before I introduce him, I just wanna give you a little background on Udo. So Udo has impacted over 5 million lives. Um, not only has he sold thousands and thousands of copies of his book, which is called Bats That Heal, Bats That Kill, and um, he has sold over 25 million bottles of his Udo's Choice product line in 50 different countries. Now, he is kind of known as the godfather of the flaxseed oil. And so this um, is so awesome because he's been around since the 80s. So I'm going to introduce Udo. Udo, welcome. Yes, welcome. Nice to Hi. have you here <laughs> I, i've actually been around since the 40s <laughs> I, was born during, I was born during the second world war in europe so oh. I, was, I was a refugee kid before i turned three that's crazy wow. and we were running we were we were escaping from the communists who were chasing us in tanks and trucks wow. on roads that were just refugees no soldiers just mothers okay. with young children on horse-drawn hay wagons okay. trying to get the heck out of there and the allies who were supposed to be the good guys mm -hmm. were using the refugees as target practice shooting at us from planes so it was a pretty crazy beginning and part of the reason why i think about the things i think about comes from recognizing that there's a lot of things we're doing that are not sustainable whether mm -hmm. you're talking about environment or politics or national international affairs or relationships or health there's a lot of things we're doing that are not based on good knowledge of how to live in harmony with one another. Mm -hmm. But is it possible? Absolutely possible. But we have to change how we think about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And for that, for that, we have to get to know ourselves a little better through stillness more than thinking. But anyway, so I, I got poisoned by pesticides in 1980. So that, that story started for me in 1980. I got poisoned by pesticides. I was very careless uh, because I took a job as a pesticide sprayer because my marriage broke up and I wanted to kill something. So I took this stupid job. <laughs> and I ended up getting poisoned by the pesticides I sprayed, which is predictable outcome. Mm -hmm. Went to the doctor, doctor said, don't have anything for pesticide poisoning. And that day I realized, oh my God, my health is my responsibility and i kind of knew that but it's like it really it really came clear and if i don't care about my health then maybe nobody does and so then i i had background in biological science and biochemistry and genetics and psychology and all kinds of stuff because i was always trying to find out how things work because i was always pretty insecure but with the more you know how things work the more secure you can become because you understand it's predictable they become predictable. So I to use that background to look at how, how can I heal myself? Number one, stop spraying pesticides. Right? <laughs> number two, improve your food intake to higher quality because your body, 80, 98% of the atoms in your body today will have been removed and replaced if we meet again one year from now, 98%. So your body is always a major construction site and if you want to raise the standard of your health, you have to raise the standard of the building blocks you bring, bring in. Mm -hmm. And of all the building blocks we bring in, the most sensitive are the oils, omega-3 and omega-6. They're essential. You can't, your body can't make them. Life can't make them in your body. So you have to bring them in from outside. And you're responsible for that here. Mm -hmm. They're the most sensitive. They need the most care. They're damaged by light, by oxygen, by heat. So they need a lot of care. 
and we give them the least care. We throw oils in the frying pan and wreck it with light oxygen and heat, damaging them all at the same time. And when we do that, we get molecules that have been twisted or changed from natural to unnatural. And many of those unnatural molecules are toxic because they go in our body, but then they interfere with what needs to be going on there. See, nature's mandate for us was not fried oils. It was fresh, whole, raw, organic, mostly plant-based. That mm -hmm. was nature's standard for us. Mm -hmm. And then we thought we were smarter than nature and smarter than life and smarter than God. And then we, and frying is the stupidest thing we <laughs> ever invented to do to our health. And so I tell people, do you have a frying pan at home? Everybody does. Everybody likes fried food. So I say, go home, get your frying pan out, turn it upside down, hit yourself on the head with it really hard. Because <laughs> that stupid thing will give you a ton of pain if you mm -hmm. don't get rid of it. Throw it out. That would be the smart way to deal with oils. Now, how does that go? Well, the industry was never interested so much, the oil industry, the big oil industry, not so much interested in health as they were in shelf life. Mm -hmm. If you have a long shelf life, two or three years on an oil, then I can make it in Vancouver where I live and I could sell it in Johannesburg and in, in Tokyo and in Ottawa and in uh, Denver you know, and New York and Buenos Aires. And which one did I miss? Oh yeah, Berlin too, right? So I could literally sell the oil around the world. So I have a very big market. Mm -hmm. But to do that, the oil has to be treated with Drano, then with window washing acid, then bleached with bleaching clades, which turns it rancid. Then it has to be heated to frying temperature to clean up the rancidity. Whoa. Oh. And in that process, maybe half to 1% of the molecules are damaged. And in a tablespoon of an oil that has been treated that way, you get, if it's 1% damaged, you get 60 quintillion damaged molecules. 60 quintillion damaged molecules. Don't even know how big that number is. <laughs> More than a million <laughs> damaged molecules that never existed in nature for every one of your body's 60 trillion cells more than a million damaged molecules for every tablespoon, for every cell in your body. And if you do that, not just today, but you do it next week and you do it next month and you do it next year and then you do it for five years, 10 years, 20 years, and then you get inflammation in some part of your body, like in the arthritic diseases or as a, as a foundation of Alzheimer's, as a foundation of atherosclerosis, as a foundation of uh, bone diseases as, it, as, as a, a, a basis for diabetes and cancer. You know, and then you say, well, I don't know. I always ate good. I don't know why I got cancer. Maybe mm -hmm. cancer just goes around randomly and hits people. No, there's a cause, mm. right? If you eat fresh, whole, raw, organic, mostly plant-based, Mm -hmm. You have the best chance, and yeah, and organic, you no know, pesticides, right? Yeah. <laughs> Raw, right? Mm -hmm. So the enzymes are in there, they help with digestion. The probiotics are on it, they help with digestion. And you get used to doing that, and maybe it takes some time to get used to it. You have the best chance of living the longest, healthiest life from a nutritional point of view, mm -hmm. right? And so I decided when I found all that out, I said, you know, oh, my God, I, I mean, I, I used some four letter words there, but, but I was like, oh, my God, I can't get healthy on oils damaged like this. Mm -hmm. We should mm -hmm. make them with health in mind. And I'm one of these guys who's going to say we should. It's like I should. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, OK, I'm going to do that. And so I figured out if you want to protect oils from light, oxygen, heat while they're being pressed, and, and uh, settled and filtered and filled into bottles, you have to, 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 you have to make a very, very tight system for doing that processing. And so I developed that. First, I conceptualized it, and then we had engineers make it, right? Wow. And that, out of that came flaxseed oil, which is now a billion dollar a year industry. I didn't make any money on it because I wanted to do it, but I didn't, I didn't think about what I wanted to, I didn't think about money. Mm -hmm. so this is my hu human nature. This is my human project. So I made $8,635 on flaxseed oil, which is now a billion dollar a year. <laughs> That's oh all 
I'm the father of it. <laughs> I'm the banker on it. <laughs> wow, I did not know that. Because I had no business background. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't thinking, gee, how could I make a lot of money? A lot of people think that way, right? <laughs> we grew up poor, so I never felt poor. So money was never really an, a thing that I was, what can I, what can I do with money? <laughs> money? For me, you know, happiness, yeah, I'm big on that. Peace, yeah, I'm big on that. You know, feeling rich, I'm big on that. <laughs> feeling joy, deep joy, I'm big on that. You know, and feeling unconditional love, which is what life has for each one of us. Life loves each one of us unconditionally. So you want to model for unconditional love? Get in touch with life. And notice it's everywhere present in your body, knows everything about you, runs the whole show, weighs nothing, and is actually who you are. Mm. You are life more than you are the body. Mm. And by the way, life is indestructible, and the body has a, ter has a term limit. The body is a terminal condition. Right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, so anyway, so I and so I and then what and then the year after I got poisoned, omega three was established as an essential nutrient. Mm -hmm. For omega six, it was known to nineteen twenty nine, way back. Mm -hmm. Nineteen eighty one, I was already thinking about making oils with health in mind. Omega threes are essential; they're hard to work with because they're even more sensitive than omega sixes, and they're a nightmare to work with. Every cell needs them, and 99% of the population does not get enough omega-3 for optimum health. And then I had, I, I tell people, I had an orgasm. Like, oh, <laughs> like, oh my God, we, if we could bring oils made with health in mind and flax, the, the most difficult one, if we could do that, we could help so many people. And I, it was like I found a mission for my life. Mm. I, oh my God, this is worth doing. And I never found something like that. You know, I clipped hedges and I did logging and, you know, I did building house. And I was like, yeah, it's a job. But this was like, no, I want this. And then we just went crazy. We took a tour through the States, uh, 101 days in a van without air conditioning in the hottest months, so July, August, half of September, half of Ju June. I slept, I slept on the floor of the van. We had our clothes on a on a broomstick in the inside the double doors of the van. <laughs> My driver built himself a bunk across the back, and we literally toured 35 states, 85 cities, talked to everybody who was listening. We were so on fire for this thing that we were doing that could help so many people. And we literally worked all day and drove all night. And then within two years, flax was the number two highest selling oil in the health food trade where we were working. And so, and then it was just like on and on and on. And this is like, we started, my, that tour was in 1988. And by the way, that was my introduction to vegan. Mm -hmm. also, because mm -hmm. when we, I didn't grow up vegan. Mm -hmm. when, when we went on that tour, we noticed that when we ate animal products, like meat mainly, when we ate meat, we felt heavy. Mm -hmm. And when we ate carbs, we fell asleep. We got tired. We, we, we couldn't stay awake. And we were working all day and, and driving all night. And so what we did is we did the entire tour. It took us 14 days to figure that out from mm -hmm. our own experience. And the rest of the tour, so 101 minus uh, 14 is like 86 days. So 86 on a raw plant-based diet. So we had cabbage. Wow. We just ate raw cabbage and carrot, <laughs> and literally did the whole tour just on whole, fresh, raw vegetables. Wow. And, and when we did that, we literally worked all day, drove all night, and we had energy to burn. Wow. wow. Yeah. And, you know, when you talk about the plant-based diet, you know, it's one of the things everybody thinks, you know, when I grew up, they said, oh, red-blooded American meat-eating, you know, tough and blah, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> they get erectile dysfunction way earlier than the plant eaters. Yes. So you want somebody sexy. <laughs> you want somebody sexy, make them eat plants. <laughs> sounds, sounds almost counterintuitive, but happens mm -hmm. to be true. Yes. So, and then we started seeing, you know, I thought, I thought, uh, if every cell needs omega-3s and most people don't get enough, there must be symptoms from not getting that. 
Mm -hmm. I didn't know what the symptoms were and the research wasn't there, but I knew what essential means. It means you can't make it in your body. you got to have it to live and be healthy. It has to come from outside. If you don't get enough, your health goes down. If you don't get enough long enough, you die. This is like the really important stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you bring it back before you die and optimize it, then all the problems that come from not getting enough are reversed. Wow. And you get your health back. Because life knows how to build your body provided you take responsibility for providing all of the building blocks. Mm -hmm. The body's made out of food, water, air, and light. That's it, right? This is not about drugs, and this is not about uh, chemicals, and it's not about industrial, you know, patentable molecules. It's good money in that, mm -hmm. but not good health in that, right? And life has had, what, four billion years to perfect the system? <laughs> we came out of nature, and we are nature, and we are meant to, the genetic program we have, that life runs, our, that life builds our body through. That genetic program was built in order to allow us to live adapted to the natural system. When you get out of line with that natural system, you know, by turning grains into white flour and cane into sugar and beets into sugar and and uh, and seeds and nuts into oils and then you refine the oils and you know bugger them up even more right and if you if you're changing it from its natural state you're doing something that your genetic program wasn't made to handle so then you, either you go short of stuff or you get toxins that don't belong in your body or your digestion doesn't work properly and those three are the cause of every degenerative condition on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. too, too little of the good stuff you need, too much of the bad stuff you should avoid, and digestion not working, you don't get all the good stuff and you create bad stuff in your digestive system, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that's the, that's the, the, <laughs> the short overview of a, of a crazy adventure, but is absolutely, and you know what? It's like now 1980 started, now it's 2020, so we're talking 40 years. I st I'm still just as excited about that that thought process and that that endeavor. Mm -hmm. Now I want to do all of health and all of human nature because we have a lot to learn about ourselves if we want to survive the rest of this century. Because we're really wrecking everything because we and we're wrecking it because we're discontent because we're not connected to our our own wholeness. Mm -hmm. And out of that disconnect, we do destructive thoughts, destructive talk, destructive actions, destructive consequences. And that won't change until we become constructive. And in order to do that, we have homework to do to reconnect to our wholeness that we experienced in our mother's womb for nine months, if we were a term baby, but mm -hmm. that we then lost connection to when we came into the world and had to get to know the world. Mm -hmm. so I, I could go on and on. But <laughs> I, yeah, I, please. I, I should allow you to ask at least one question. <laughs> no, that was that was just so in, like like so much information. Like I didn't know like some of this stuff, and it's just like your story just is so amazing that you came from like that background, and now yeah. you're here like trying to just help all these people, which you've obviously have been helping so many people, and you're just continuing to to do that. <laughs> yeah, as many as I can, you know. It's like. You know, and, and what's really interesting about it, you know, before I started thinking about who am I, mm -hmm. I was always, I was a getter because everything I did was like, what can I do that will get me taken care of? Mm -hmm. And nothing ever did because the care that I'm looking for is on the inside and doing stuff on the outside, even when I'm successful. I get three days where I say, yay, I did it. And <laughs> after that, I'm, I still feel disconnected. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you can't solve your inner problem of disconnection by getting successful on the outside, mm -hmm. and that's and and that discontent is our driving is our driving force, right? Mm -hmm. That's what powers us. That's we're always you know until you get content. When I got content, it had completely changed. I wouldn't do things that needed to be done because if I couldn't see how they would take care of me, mm -hmm. that's the getter. again. It's a getter, right? When I started learning to sit still and let my awareness inside to where my to to the space my body occupies and look mm -hmm. around and see what's there and what does it feel like and there's boredom which is very peaceful which is by the way is a really good thing 
boredom and peace. You know, I call it peace, but some people who are addicted to doing stuff <laughs> call it boredom, right? So it's like you're just seeing your addiction. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. If you go a little deeper, you'll find your peace. And at, at some point, you get to, oh my God, it is so beautiful to be alive. Human beings, life is so magnificent that every human being, 8 billion people, if they could sit still and find that place in them, they would recognize that anything, the greatest person you've ever met, including the masters after whom religions were done, mm -hmm. everything those masters had, you have in you. Mm -hmm. The difference between them and us is they explored it and we dabble in it. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So um, I don't know where I was going to go with that one. But... <laughs> but, but um, so yeah, and then and then I got to a point where I started working with digestive enzymes and probiotics mm -hmm. because they're required for digestion and raw foods contain both if they're grown in nature. Well, when we cook foods, we kill the probiotics and we destroy the enzymes. Now mm -hmm. our body has more work to do. And it's possible that unfriendly microbes mess up our digestive system. And when you eat animal-based products, less friendly bacteria grow on those than grow on plants. Mm -hmm. If you change from animal to plant-based, within two weeks, your whole microbiome, the, the bacteria in your digestive tract, has become much friendlier. It's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why you live longer on plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had no idea. I knew that pr taking probiotics was good, but I didn't know that it was actually on uh vegetables <laughs> like <laughs> because they live in the top layer of fermenting leaves and, and and grass on top of the soil when the plant pushes through that the soil bacteria are stripped back because they stay in the soil mm -hmm. and the plant picks up the probiotics out of that layer and then the, oh. the probiotics you know a cow never gets bad breath if it's if it's on a meadow i mm -hmm. I, I grew up on a farm so i know that mm -hmm. and their, their breath smelled like yogurt even, they weren't eating yogurt. Oh. <laughs> they were eating grass. And there's probiotics on the grass. So every mouthful of grass, they get probiotics in their mouth. And then the probiotics work their way through the entire system. And wow. they protect the cow's digestive system. And they do part of the digestion. And they keep unfriendly bacteria in check. Hmm. And, and they even make uh, short-chain fatty acids and some of the vitamins uh they they make those mm -hmm. so they so they're a little you know and and they can do things we can't do so mm -hmm. they we need them and when you grow animals that have no probiotics or no bacteria in their digestive tract mm -hmm. those animals are very fragile mm -hmm. people do experiments with them in science mm -hmm. but they're very fragile so you have to treat them very very carefully because they get infections really easily and they get immune problems really easily. And because there's a lot that the probiotics do for our immune system, for our digestion, for our brain function. Literally, they help. What they do in our gut helps every part of our body. It's mm -hmm. very important. Wow. So I worked with those. Then I got to greens because greens is the foundation of everything. And mm -hmm. then I started thinking, well, what else affects health? And the truth is everything affects health. Everything affects health. So who you're with affects health. You know, when we were kids in the playing soccer, somebody ticked us off. You know, we get really mad. We say, you and me stick. So even as kids, we knew that other people affect our health. Right? Mm. And how your environment is, affects your health. And how your thinking affects your health. And how you feel affects your health. And whether you are inspired or have purpose affects your health. So mm -hmm. everything affects your health. So if you want to be really healthy, you have to give everything its due. And I have mm -hmm. I, eight parts to it. Internal awareness, that's the foundation. That's where your peace lives. Life energy, that's where your unconditional love and your power and your mastery comes from. Because your life is the master. You know, we talked about those masters. Mm -hmm. Well, the, that master... But no matter what you call it, you can call it life or you can call it nothing or you can call it Buddha or you can call it Christ or you can call it Krishna or you can call it 
Lao Tzu, there's a bunch of them, right? Mm -hmm. there. You know what? Doesn't matter what you call it, but the master of your body lives inside of you and it's energy. And eventually, if you want to trace it back, it comes from foods that came from plants that mm -hmm. came that collected sunlight and that sunlight energy is stored in the molecules in the bonds between atoms when we break those down that energy is released and that's the energy we live on that is our life that wow. energy and that energy cannot get sick never dies neither internal awareness can never get sick never dies so if you know let's say you have a terminal illness see we say i'm the body but you're not the body this, you know, if I say to you, whose body is that? You say, well, it's my body, right? Okay, you've just told me that you're not the body. You're the <laughs> owner of the body. You've just told me you're the owner of the body. Who is the owner of the body? Life is the owner of the body. And in your individual essence, you are life. Mm -hmm. How well do you know yourself? Well, most people, almost not at all, because we never look. We never go there. We never go into the energy part of a being, right? So, yeah. so now the third one is inspired creativity. That's about purpose. Fourth one is uh, physical body, food and fitness, digestion mm -hmm. and detox are the big areas in that. Then there's survival smarts. How do you deal with crisis, right? Mm -hmm. And then there is social group. And uh, seven is uh, natural environment and eight is the big picture you know mm -hmm. how are you with the fact that your body is a terminal condition and it's like teensy in an infinite universe mm. right? if you're comfortable with all of those and you and you live present to all of that all of your being and your surroundings you live the best life everything is beautiful mm -hmm. you feel good your expression is attractive your face facial features are attractive you know and you could be the plainest looking person on the planet <laughs> but when you're lit up yeah find that really attractive and they don't notice that you're really just very plain looking <laughs> <laughs> and then you say oh my god she's so beautiful but it's, but it's your radiance and even mm. you know even even when we talk about like people say uh this is a little crude but i but i i think for education we could maybe do that you know the guys that say oh i do her you ever mm -hmm. heard that mm -hmm. you heard that expression right we yeah. didn't use it when i was a kid we but the same thing is you're attracted or tna right mm -hmm. oh yeah oh wow but you know what is that we think we're in love with the body mm -hmm. but then if you're in love with somebody and then they die all of a sudden, the body's not attractive anymore. Now it's like, it's just like, first you cry, right? And, you, and you're shocked mm -hmm. and you get all that, right? But then very quickly you say, okay, we've got to get rid of this body. Mm -hmm. oh, I, thought, I thought you were in love with the body. No, you weren't. Because mm -hmm. life is attractive to life. Mm. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's so good. And then, and then if you want to talk about relationship in another way, you know, most people pick the wrong person for a relationship. What I say to people, young people, I say, you know, you're not ready for a serious relationship until you have a serious relationship with your own life. You need to do your homework because when you get in touch with your life, you feel taken care of. You don't want somebody else to do it for you relationship can't fix that for you if you de haven't done your homework mm -hmm. you're going to fail <laughs> in the relationship <laughs> right but if you're if you're whole in yourself by yourself and then you get into a relationship with a person who's also done their homework mm -hmm. and you should probably insist on it because mm -hmm. for you guys for women it's worse than for men and <laughs> men can come and go right woman, yeah. woman she gets pregnant she's got 20 years Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why women do the choosing, and that's why it's important they do the choosing. And it's important to choose a man who's done his homework mm -hmm. because he'll be around and he won't be beating you up because he didn't do his own homework. Right. Ah. And blame it on you. 
that you should be you should be making it work for me. No, you've got to make it work for yourself. That's that's <laughs> before you get in the relationship. Yes. Or in the relationship, then you need to pick it up. Right? Uh, make wow. sense? That's like perfect relationship advice, especially <laughs> for Kayla and I, because we're both so young. Yeah, absolutely. We're both not in a relationship, so that's definitely. Yeah, and then look, yeah. if you if you if you're fulfilled and I'm fulfilled and we're in a relationship, you can we can have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not leaning on you to mm -hmm. make it work, for you. and you're not leaning on me to make it make it work for you. And then we can then we can plan and we can have adventures and we can dance and we can have fun. <laughs> we can live without expecting mm -hmm. possible from the other person. Yeah. Wow, this is incredible. I'm just saying, like, we thought we were going to talk about oils. Oh, no, we are on a whole new level, guys. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. The, oil, the oil of all of the things in nutrition, the oil, I call it the God molecule. Mm -hmm. It is the molecule, especially the omega-3, that gives you the highest amount of energy. Uh. And health is about vitality. And and being sexy is about vitality. You know, it's not as much about TNA as it is about radiance, right? And radiance comes from presence. Mm -hmm. And if you're not present within yourself, it's really hard to radiate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Basically, what, radiating ig ignorance or darkness. Yeah. And what do you mean by TNA? Oh, breasts and buttocks, but, but they're shorter words, words for that. Oh! You know what I'm talking about? Oh. <laughs> Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was our short version of when I was younger. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the, uh, the other oil change, you know, people say, oh, you know, the only reason you get omega 3s from plants is because they turn into fish oil. Mm hmm. But it's not true. Fish oil is not essential. It's an essential fatty acid derivative, derivative that your body can make. Every cell in your body has all the enzymes it needs to turn this plant omega-3 into fish oil omega-3, provided you get enough starting material. Mm -hmm. And most people, 99%, are not getting enough starting material. Mm -hmm. So my idea was I didn't like fish oils because I didn't like the smell and I didn't like the taste. And I, I knew how much damage was done. I learned that in biochemistry. And they're five times more sensitive than the plant omega-3s, which are five times more sensitive than the usual omega-6 oils. So they're super, super sensitive. And I said, what we need to do is not give people fish oil. What we need to do is we got to make sure they get enough starting material and then let their cells and their body and their brain and their during pregnancy let them make the omega-3 derivatives that they need because they have enough starting material to get mm. that. Mm. Right? And the omega-3s are super important in pregnancy because the brain is has a lot of omega-3s in it. And when a mother doesn't get enough omega-3s in her diet and 90% don't, mm -hmm. then the child would take it out of her brain because nature says, kids the future. Mom's the past. Mm -hmm. If we have to sacrifice the past for the future, we'll do that. So the kid mm -hmm. will pilfer the, the omega-3s out of her brain. And then she's more likely to have chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, depression, postpartum, uh, um, autoimmune diseases, collagen diseases, uh, low energy, mm -hmm. and what they call mommy brain. Mm -hmm. Oh. And, they've shown, and they've shown that each child depletes the mother further and each child gets less than the previous child, which is why the oldest children on average have the highest intelligence and the younger <laughs> children on average have the lowest. Now, that's not always true. I'm the fourth. I'm the fourth <laughs> of them, I mean, I'm the oldest child, so that means I took the most. <laughs> yeah, you took it off. Yeah, you took it off. <laughs> if your mother didn't have another one, she probably was a better and more capable, more energetic mother. So that mm -hmm. would have been helpful to you, mm -hmm. right? So what they say is, is that mothers need to make sure, or women need to make sure that they have enough of both essential fatty acids, because they're both in brain function, more, uh, enough 
essential fatty acids in their diet, both for their own health and the health of their children. And the mothers are much better at converting plant omega-3s into fish oils than men are, because men hardly ever get pregnant, so they don't need to, you know, they don't need to maintain one brain while they're building another, right? Mm -hmm. So very important. And we have lots of Udo babies, <laughs> Udo babies in different places. People send me pictures of their babies, right? And uh, my joke is, yeah, these are Odi Udo babies. I wasn't in the bedroom, but I was in the kitchen. <laughs> and, and the women who take the oil uh, um, and and are are consistent with that, consistently report that they their pregnancy is less eventful, their deliveries easier, and the children are born with more energy, and more energy is considered a sign of intelligence in babies. They take interest in their environment and they're getting into everything. That's a sign of intelligence because if your intelligence is really low, like 70, which is like idiot, right? Mm -hmm. If it's really that low, they a lot of the time they just sit around and they don't take interest in their environment. So mm -hmm. the more interest you take in your environment, the more intelligent kids are considered to be when they're too young to get IQ tests because mm -hmm. the IQ tests depend on quite a bit of learning to have been done before you can administer it. Wow, yeah. that is so cool. And then with athletes, <laughs> 40 to 60% increase in stamina within a month of taking a tablespoon per 50 pounds of body weight per day of Udo's oil mixed in their food and intake spread out over the course of the day. And we did what we did, we worked with uh, uh, strength and and endurance athletes. The guy who set the longest distance ever run in North America in for 24 hours, he ran six marathons, 152 miles. He did, oh it, he did it using Udo's oil. Now, he didn't just use Udo's oil, he <laughs> ate, ate his vegetables. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's a plant-based guy. That's right? and, and when we gave people oil to run marathons at the beginning, way back when we started, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's saying carb load and, and then run your marathon. But carbs only get you 20 miles. Then you hit the wall and then you drag yourself the last six miles. We said, no, 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 carb deplete. Run the race on oil. And the omega-3s, I call them the fat burning fire starter. Mm -hmm. So we gave them the omega-3s and they ran the rate. Not everybody was willing to do it because it was so out of the box, right? We completely opposite to what they'd been told. But some people tried it because they didn't like hitting the wall. They said, well, it's, I, I'll try it. They come back and yeah. they would say, you know what? I ran the, the marathon. I had energy the whole time. And when I finished the marathon, I felt like I had enough energy to run another one. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's awesome. And there's no training program that gets you 40 to 60% increase in stamina performance, also healing and recovery in a third half the time. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no training program that gets you that kind of advantage. Yeah. So some of the very elite athletes use the oil for that, but they don't tell anybody because it's so competitive that anybody who gets an edge wants to keep the edge to themselves, right? Mm -hmm. you tell your buddy, he may be better than you. <laughs> yeah. I find things that give them an edge, but they won't. And we thought we were going to blow the lid off everything. They were going to talk about it. And we were so disappointed. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I, I so see how that is true. Cause even from when I take it and I am a runner, it's, it's night and day difference for me yeah. with the oil and without in it. What, so. In what way? Night in, in what? Energy, um, energy, energy, I would say. Um, and also like just feeling happy. I don't know. <laughs> Mood, How yeah. come? But it it's yeah. I can tell like it takes me like two days, two or three days of being on it, and then I'm back. Like if I stop, it's yeah. very yeah, two or three days, yeah. Mm -hmm. And how about skin? Hmm. How about skin? Oh yeah, yeah, my Making skin, skin soft, soft and velvety. Mm hmm. Those are the three things you people notice mm -hmm. most quickly. It's predictable. Yeah. Why? Because omega-3 and 6 form a barrier in the skin against the loss of moisture. So this is an internal moisturizer. Oh. And you don't evaporate water through your skin because the oil holds it in. And so your skin doesn't get dry. When your skin is dry, you need more oil. 
In summer, you need less than in winter. In dry places, it's more noticeable when you don't get enough. And then you literally, if you get enough, your skin becomes soft and velvety. That's wow. how we optimum. Interesting. In wow. of, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, in 30 days, you notice, but some people notice within hours when they take it, a difference. Mm -hmm. And some of our, our, our weightlifters, they said it after about 45 minutes of taking maybe three tablespoons, and they take them off a spoon, which I, I don't recommend. <laughs> mix it in food, it's better. Mm -hmm. But they say if they take a glob of it, within 45 minutes, they, they notice they have substantially more energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's like it's not like 3% or 5%, you, which you might not notice. They really notice. Yeah. I mean, and they have been raised, but they don't tell their buddies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're getting a lot of people asking questions on yeah. here. I don't, know, I don't know, Megan, if you can pull them up. Um, I see one. It says, it says, which oils would you recommend? Mm -hmm. Well, if you want a one-shot deal, Udo's oil is by far the best oil out there. Like, mm -hmm. we can try all things. Like, flax oil has too much omega-3. You can become omega-6 deficient on it. Hemp oil does not have enough omega-3s. Uh, and most, most commercial oils don't have omega-3s. A little bit in soybean, a little bit in walnut, a uh, little bit in uh, canola, um, you know, but most oils like sunflower and safflower and sesame and peanut and almond, those have only omega-6s, no omega-3s. The ones where you get the energy is the omega-3s, mm. six to some extent, but these threes are 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 the, 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 the kicker. So... Yeah. When would you recommend trying to find because I know I think your brain you said has one where it's omega three, six, and nine all together? Is that what yeah. you recommend yeah. trying to get all three? Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, omega three and six are essential. Omega nine is actually not essential. Every oil has omega nines in it. So we're not adding something from the outside. Mm -hmm. They're already and there's a little bit of saturated fat in there because that's in all oils. Mm -hmm. But it's but what it what is good, it's made with health in mind. The balance between omega three and six is right. It's high in omega threes, and that's where you get your benefits from. Then it's in glass. You don't want oil in plastic because plastic leaches into oil, and when mm -hmm. that gets into your body, it creates inflammation. So I do not recommend. Oil is the worst thing to put in plastic of any food. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Oh. And oil and oil leaches. Uh, sorry, plastic leaches into oil quicker than it leaches into water. And you know when oh. you drink water in plastic bottles, you can already taste the plastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> more goes into oil. If you now, put saran wrap on food, then then plastic will drift into the food in direct proportion to the amount of fat or oil in the food. Wow. Done on it. Wow. And and you have a couple different blends. And yeah. I, I take I take the one with DHA. Is there a certain one you would recommend for a certain type? Of I always person? recommend the basic one. The basic one? The DHA one was specifically made either for women when they're pregnant or for people over 50. Oh. But I'm, but I'm 78 and I don't, I use the basic blend. I know my body can convert and on, on, on oh. purpose, I don't take any fish oils because I'm the experiment. At least I know what my body will tell me and it works. Yeah. yeah. How do you get omega-3 without fish oils, somebody says. Mm -hmm. Poppy, we're talking about Udo's oil. It mm -hmm. has plant-based omega-3 called alpha-linolenic acid in it, and your body will make what the fish oils contain if you get enough of it. Enough, optimum for us, it's about 25% of calories. It's about a tablespoon for 50 pounds of body weight per day, mixed in food, and the intake spread out over the course of the day. And it, oh, there's research that shows that they'll increase IQ by three to nine points not just mood, but also intelligence. And it's true for that takes a little longer because you're rebuilding brain, brain structure. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, I was never really dumb, but, uh, but when I started taking the oil, I actually did, I like processing things in my head. I do math in my head. You know, I grew up before slide rules and computers and, and calculators. <laughs> so we got pretty good at doing that. And I, I like doing that and getting approximate answers for math questions. And I got better at doing that wow. after I started getting omega-3s. Because there was a time when I wasn't getting omega-3s either. I also was really clumsy as a kid. Mm -hmm. And when I started taking taking omega-3s, 
I actually became way more coordinated. And I think that was like the clumsiness. And there is research that shows that when you become omega-3 deficient, you actually become clumsy. They don't call it clumsy. They call I can't remember what they call it. There's a fancy name. Fancy name. <laughs> but clumsy, you know, so, you know, I was a stumble bump. I was always the last guy that got, got voted on the baseball team or the soccer team. And I also only have good vision in one eye. Mm. Uh -huh. So space perception was difficult for me. So the fast sports, I couldn't, I, you know, by the time I swung the bat, the, the ball was already in the catcher's mitt, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and that was when I was a kid. And now I, I can do quite a bit, even though I still only have good vision on one eye. I can I do a lot better in sports than I did as a kid. And I don't practice them. I, I'm, I'm pretty well coordinated. Wow. That's awesome. So coordination. Yeah. Okay. I, I compete in the sport of Olympic weightlifting. Which blend? <laughs> Same one. Um, and I'm not doing that just because it's self-serving. It's, it's just it's the one we get the best results on. When we did our, our sports studies, the weightlifters who were in their 50s went back to doing the kind of workouts they were able to do in their 30s. Whoa. That was their report. Wow. We, had, we measured their, you know, the way we measured the, the effects is we had athletes work their sport to exhaustion. That's how you, you know, when you've got mm -hmm. nothing left, then you know what your capacity is, right? Mm -hmm. So then, so we did that before we started giving them the oil. And we only worked with people who didn't know the oil. Because you can't do it, you know. You need to, you need the baseline. What difference does the oil make? And then a, a month later, we measured there that again on the same sport, work it to exhaustion. We had a cyclist who went from ninety kilometers to one hundred and forty-six in thirty days. Whoa! Sixty <laughs> percent increase. It's huge. Yeah. And the weightlifters, you know, same. You know what they did in their thirties, they were now able to do in their fifties. You know, wow. as you when you hit when you hit twenty five, that's around where you start, you know, somewhere between twenty five and thirty, and then your en energy tops, and then it starts gradually becoming more difficult. Well, these guys got twenty years. Wow, in their sport, right? We had hockey players who went back into hockey. Where do you buy it? Health food stores or Amazon? It's called Udo's oil. Mm -hmm. Or you can buy it off my website too. Then I get four percent from Amazon. <laughs> uh, website is udoschoice.com by the way that's where the that's where the uh that's where the yeah we'll put that in the comments yeah. for, Udo's yeah. choice is where the products are and then the udo.com is where my courses and my my educational material and the broader field is yeah yes. i'm on on facebook and instagram and i have a youtube channel that's a ton of oil articles and oil Mm -hmm. presentations on it yeah wow. yeah i'll put all this in the you can all change just like your car <laughs> so Dirty true. Oil, clean oil in <laughs> so good guys if you are watching this in the comments let us know like what your thoughts are i'm giddy i'm like this is so good it's an honor to have you here udo and sharing all this incredible information with us yeah, when you show up down here i can i can see that my that's too small for me <laughs> <laughs> cool yeah. Let's see if we have any other comments um i think that was uh mostly it just kind of like what oils to recommend which you answer yeah. that. and here's the thing you know I, I tell you all this stuff i can i could say that it does this and does that but here's the thing try it and see what your body tells you. You know, sometimes mm. people call me and they say, well, I have this condition. Will it fix my condition? And I have to say, well, I don't know. I don't know what caused it. I don't know your story. I don't know what you're eating. I don't know how you're living. Mm -hmm. Don't take it because it'll fix your problem. Take it because it's required for health. That's what mm -hmm. essential nutrients means. Required for health. Can't live without it. Go down if you don't get enough. Mm -hmm. right? And and it's and then when you take it and take it at the tablespoon of tablespoon per 50 pounds of body weight per day in food spread out over the course of the day and then you tell me what improves pay attention what your body tells you because your body is the ultimate judge 
or whether something works or not. You know, mm. I, it works, it works, it works, it works, it works, and you try it and nothing happens, then basically I become the, become the liar. <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah. Fundamentally, your 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 body or your life and your ability to perceive is your expert you know mm-hmm. some things people tell me some things i try them out it doesn't work well it maybe it works for some people but it doesn't work for me so why would i do it if it doesn't work for me ultimately you got to let talk to you you got to get present to what your body tells you mm-hmm. present in your own space that's another another you know plop to go in to go inside and be present in your space Mm -hmm. that's where all your wisdom lives that's where all (laughs) insight comes from that's Mm -hmm. where all your good feelings come from it's like Mm. why would you why would you not go there (laughs) (laughs) pros and cons between black tea coconut and udos okay udos oil the emphasis the two essential fatty acids in the right ratio made with health in mind in glass and refrigerated because they're very sensitive to damage by light oxygen heat that's what we're focused on coconut is a saturated fat it's pretty stable has virtually no omega-3s so it's a you know the only thing from oil you need is omega-3 and 6 that's what we focused on if it doesn't have omega-3s in it you got to still get them from somewhere Mm -hmm. and coconut has virtually no omega-6s either so it's okay as a fuel but not until after you've optimized your omega-3 and 6 intake. When you take coconut or saturated fats in general, they will interfere with the work of the essential fatty acids, which is why you need to put that first and optimize your intake. And then it cuts you some slack. Then you can have a little coconut and and it's not going to be a problem. It's fuel, Mm -hmm. right? If you burn it, it's fuel. But Coconut has been shown to increase cardiovascular risk factors. But if you eat the coconut, then you don't get the increase in those risk factors. So mm. if you can, eat the, eat the damn coconut. <laughs> <laughs> black, seed, black seed is completely different. I don't use the oil. It has some omega-6s, no omega-3s. But black seed as a seed, is a, it's a, it's a spice has a little bit of a peppery, spicy taste. Eat the seeds, forget the oil. Mm. Right? And and let's talk about, and, and so bl- black seed, I, I don't recommend the oil, although a lot of people make a lot of claims for it. Eat the seed. Now, let's take it back to Udo's oil. Udo's oil is also a processed product. If you could get all your essential fatty acids from just eating flax, sunflower, and sesame seeds, do it. What happened to me is somebody somebody who was vegan who said, well, isn't nature, didn't nature make sure, you know, say we should, you just eat whole foods, don't use oils at all. And there are some people who don't use anything but whole foods and mm-hmm. they won't use the oil. And some of them I know well, and we've had good conversations, right? So, so I put it to the test. I was in California. In summer, I need about two or three tablespoons to make my skin soft and velvety. In winter, I need about four. So even in summer in California, where I need less oil, I was not able to eat enough flax, sunflower, and sesame seeds to get my skin nice. Mm. And so what I say is use the seeds in a, in, the, to, in the ratio of more flax. Like I ate five, uh, five tablespoons of flax seed. Mm-hmm. That absorbs a ton of water, so it like it really bulks up. So you got like 30 tablespoons. That's a meal. Right? <laughs> so, and then three tablespoons of sunflower sesame seed. They don't suck up as much moisture. But I couldn't eat more than eight tablespoons of seeds. Mm-hmm. And, and I couldn't get my skin to optimum place. So I, what I would say to you is eat the seeds. And if you can get your skin soft and velvety by doing that, you don't need the oil. If you can't or you get into more exercise or more energy requirements, then use the oil to top it up. Because ultimately there's a lot of things in the seeds you will not find in the oil. The thing we did that we did right is that we made it with health in mind so you're not eating damaged oil, mm. right? But the seeds themselves are nature's. So my, my view is nature's mandate is not necessarily optimum health. 
nature needs you to be healthy enough to grow up and sur survive and grow up. Then nature needs you to uh, have kids and be, uh, be around to raise the kids. Mm -hmm. When the kids don't need you anymore, neither does nature. So the way that it used to be done, you, if nature provides the essentials, but in suboptimal quantities, then what happens is as you get older, your machinery runs down you get and slows you down and you, your body will check out earlier than you've optimized your intake of all the essential nutrients. Hmm. So, the, so the argument is, is nature's mandate optimum health? No, nature's mandate is survival of the species. Mm -hmm. right? That needs you not to be in optimal health, but in adequate health to get your childbearing function done. Mm -hmm. right? So, you know, and, and I'm sure I could have very good philosophical discussions with <laughs> No, nature's mandate is optimum health, and we could have a pretty interesting conversation about it. But my conclusion was, well, it isn't necessarily nature's mandate that you have optimum health, right? Mm -hmm. So the oil has a place, but if you can do it without the oil, by all means do it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You know? And by the way, do not fry Udo's oil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, find oil and I find you. I will come and spank you. Do not fry the oil. <laughs> yeah, because the better an oil is for you when it's fresh, the worse it is for you when you damage it. Mm -hmm. Omega trees are damaged more extensively than <laughs> omega sixes. They're more damaged than than omega nines, and they're more damaged than saturated fats under the same conditions. Mm -hmm. So do not fry omega-3s. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. why I don't like fish oils is because the processing of fish oils is like the processing of the cooking oils. Drain mm -hmm. over the water as it bleached and fried. They call them different names, you know, sodium hydroxide, phosphoric acid, bleaching clays, and then they call it wiped film evaporation or molecular distillation or deodorization. Mm -hmm. You know, but the, the process is quite a bit similar uh, and they're much more easily damaged. They're like five times more easily damaged than omega-6 oils. Wow. So they're very super, super sensitive. And it's why they stink all the time. And mm -hmm. it's why that the, the taste of that of fish oils has always been an issue. Then you put them in a capsule and you swallow the capsule and then you get the, get a burp. And the burp is, is as <laughs> rancid as it would have been had you put it in your mouth. <laughs> and that's like, it's, so it's really unpleasant. <laughs> right? So yes. not only is it unnecessary, but thank God it's also unpleasant. <laughs> and, so, and, and now let's let me talk about um, the you know we talk about plant based you know we so I'm saying plant based is fine. Think about it. Elephants don't eat any meat, mm -hmm. only grass and shrubs and leaves. They have a pretty big brain. There's DHA in their brain. Where'd they get it from? They make it in their body from the grass they eat. Mm -hmm. Same thing with horses. Same thing with zebras. Same thing with gorillas. Gorillas eat leaves. Mm -hmm. Where do they get it? Where do they get their omega-3s from? Well, there's omega-3s in all plants, like even low amounts, 0.1%, right? And they convert that in their body into the more sensitive, high-energy DHA, EPA, and, and then from that, all kinds of other things. What the reason for mood, the body out of omega-3s makes endocannabinoids feel good molecules elevate your mood lift depression right mm -hmm. so uh yeah so uh so you don't need okay and then you say okay well those are just animals what about humans in hin in india there's a caste called the brahmin caste they're the they're the intellectuals they're the academics they're the preachers they're the those those people obligate vegetarians Never fish, never fish oil. 5,000 years at least, probably going back 20,000 years. Only animal product, a little bit of clabbered milk for the probiotics. Mm -hmm. And there's no DHA in clabbered milk. Mm. Right? So they've been doing it for 5,000 years. There's a 300 million of them. <laughs> wow. And they, can, and they can think just as well as we can. 
they can see just as well as we can and they reproduce just as well as we can and that requires sperm has dha in it retina has dha in it brain has dha in it if that was not makeable out of plants they would be dumb blind and sterile and they're not they're just as good in all three departments <laughs> fish and eat fish oil. And there's some people who came up with the cockabunga theory of the reason why human beings took over the planet is because their brain developed and they lived on coasts and they ate fish. You know, and you know what? That sounds really good for a professor to say if he gets grants from the fish oil industry mm. in a university, but it's complete BS. Mm. There are so many plant-based animals that have brains that have DHA in them that need DHA for their vision and their sperm. Rabbits go in there and, you know, some birds go in there. So <laughs> there, the idea that the body cannot convert, and there's nobody argues that every human being in every cell, except their red blood cells, which don't have any DNA in them, mm -hmm. in every cell that has a nucleus and DHA in it, has all of the genes you need to do the conversion of alpha linolenic acid and linoleic acid to the next derivative, to the next derivative, to the next unsaturated derivative, all through about maybe 10 steps to make the de derivatives and then take those derivatives and make a whole bunch of other things through enzymes coded on your genetic material. Everybody has them. If you didn't have them, in fact, actually somebody called, asked Walter Willett, who is from the Harvard School of Public Health, asked him in Denmark, what would happen if your body could not convert the plant-based alpha linolenic acid into the fish-based EPA and DHA? And without any hesitation, he said they would be dead. Wow. So the idea that you have to have fish oil or that the body can't convert, that's advertising for turf protection by the fish oil industry. Mm -hmm. They started that year, that, not the year, the week that we came out with flaxseed oil in 1987 they started that advertising campaign because oh of they had competition. yeah yeah wow. and you know what? i've been there for 40 years i was there for all of that wow and you, see, you know you see who's who's twisting the information and sometimes for the sake of money people twist their information mm -hmm. you know like the, one of the worst things about human beings we were made capable of lying <laughs> 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 and then and you know what your goal is you'll tell the story that gets gets your goal fulfilled mm -hmm. yeah wow <laughs> this has been incredible like <laughs> so good yeah, definitely i i'm like my mind is blown yeah you're such a you're full of so much information definitely yeah it's really enjoyed just having you on here, spreading yeah, cool. all your wealth to all of us. And well, and you know what? It's really nice to talk to young people because they're still listening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? definitely. So it's, really, it's cool for an old guy to talk yeah. to young people, you know. And what's nice about it, I think what makes it come alive is I, I was there. This is like personal experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seeing it, weighing it, figuring it out you know, trying things out, what works, what doesn't work, who, to, who says yes, who said no, you know? And so I have a, when it comes to this arena, I'm, I'm really good. of human health, I don't know anybody who's better at it than I am. Mm -hmm. I mean, I definitely more, think the best. <laughs> it's a big topic. It's a big topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I started my goal for doing this kind of stuff started when I was six years old, because I went through the war, everything was, shifty and you know it's like i was very uh like i was really shy read mm -hmm. a lot of books and when i was six years old i listened to adults argue mm. and i thought it was trivial what they were arguing about is why are you arguing about this this doesn't make any difference and it t occurred to me there must be a way that human beings can live in harmony mm. and then the other thought was and i'm gonna find out how I was six years old. I didn't know how complicated everything is, right? <laughs> and that was my, that's my driver. That's where all of this stuff has to do with how do we get so into a state of being in ourselves where we don't, where we feel fulfilled because the fulfillment lives within us. It's already there. We just have to look into it instead mm -hmm. of away from it. When we feel fulfilled, we don't want to steal each other's shit. 
Mm -hmm. When we stop stealing each other's shit, we can live in harmony. <laughs> when we live in harmony, making sure that everybody's basic needs are met on a long-term sustainable basis is a piece of cake. Mm -hmm. You won't do it with a piece of cake, but it is a piece of cake. <laughs> right? And so that's basically yeah. my, my goal. It's like we, we could all live so much better than we do, but yeah. it requires us to do a little bit of homework. Mm -hmm. And it affects when you do your homework, you know, it f affects everything. Like when mm -hmm. I'm in peace and I feel the peace, I look around everywhere and I say, oh my God, peace is everywhere. It's always been everywhere. <laughs> you know, why are people looking for peace? It's everywhere. But only peace knows that. Mm. Like when I'm not in peace, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. you know, if I'm angry, then I look at the same world and I see, oh, there's an enemy. Oh, there's an enemy. Oh, I better build a wall here. Oh, I better fortress myself here. Oh, you know, and if I'm in a state of being of fear, then I look. I look at the same world and I see danger everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then when I see danger, then I hide or I try to find a way to protect myself. Mm -hmm. right? And and because our state of being is so powerful, it actually creates our perception. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's not like I don't see you as you are. I see you as I am. You yeah. Get that? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And it could be, you know, say it could be women are beautiful. It could be, oh, women are dangerous. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it's just like, it's just a trip in my head, right? In, in my state of being of peace, everything is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Unbelievably beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. And when I feel taken care of, I can let you be who you are. I don't have to have an opinion of how you should live your life. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And when 8 billion people do that, this is going to be a very different planet. And yeah. It's possible to do that because we are wired for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, just to, we just have to stop looking away from the wiring and look into the wiring. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's built in. Heaven on earth is built into every human being. Yeah. And then when I, you know, and then from a point of peace, I will see the peace in other people and speak to that peace. That's a different conversation than mm -hmm. speak to the enemy, right? So I'll mm -hmm. speak to that peace and then how I express myself into the world and what i build into the world will be a reflection an expression of my state of being mm. right yeah so then the question becomes what is the best state of being to live in to cultivate to practice to become good at in order to have the best kind of world that is possible for a human being to have mm -hmm. that's a good goal yeah, I think that's a very good goal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. I don't know. I'm I'm doing a lot of talking. I'm having a lot of fun. I, oh yeah, I, I we love it. Your enjoyment. And yeah, you know, and and I know you know it. Your passion from oil to now helping people in other aspects of life has changed, um, and so we have the link up there for anyone who's interested and learning more to get more information um and yeah like we we're just so happy and grateful that you were able to be on with us and share all of this this is right. incredible. Now, you, now everybody knows how to age well and thrive yes <laughs> we've got to bring the whole man on to, to talk about that <laughs> yes well, then I guess we'll all sign off here. I think that we're ending it on a good note. So I appreciate you so much for joining us today and all of y'all in the comments as well. Just, I appreciate all of y'all just coming in and watching and hopefully gathering all that info, good information that uh, we just received. So um, we'll see all y'all soon well, and I appreciate yeah, all y'all. And you're on my team helping to turn the world into what it could be. Okay. Yes. So thank you very much. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Yes. Yeah. Bye, everyone.